Chapter 5, Stereoisomerism. This is also called as stereochemistry. All right. So the term stereo means in space. So we're trying to visualize a molecule in three-dimensional space in this case. So let's say if you have a, bo uh, a bond above the plane or below the plane, okay, or in plane, so those sort of things. Okay. <clears throat> so this chapter can be divided into three different steps. Okay. Uh, so step one is finding a stereogenic carbon. Okay, so we'll look into every, each and every step in detail, but this is the overall picture of your chapter. That's what we're looking into. Okay, step two is assigning priorities. Okay, then step three is assigning RNS configuration. So this is our ultimate goal to assign RNS configuration to a molecule. Okay, and then we go stepwise with this. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll start with the step one. We will learn everything in detail. Okay, once we got that step, then we go to step two. Okay, because they're kind of dependent on each other. If you know step one, then you can do step two. If you know step two and step one, then you can only do step three. All right, so let's start with step one, which is finding a stereogenic carbon. Okay. Now, a lot of these terms you haven't heard before. They're all new terms, all right? So I'll also try to explain what, what all those terms mean, okay? <clears throat> all I can tell you is this chapter is, is a very, very simple chapter. Okay, you don't really need a deep knowledge of chemistry. Okay, uh, this chapter is more like a puzzle. Okay, so if you how can you put pieces together? Okay, so a stereogenic carbon can also be called as pyrrolyl center. Okay, some books also use the term as chiral center. All right, <clears throat> so when you're trying to find a stereogenic carbon, we're looking at a carbon okay, that has all the four bonds on it. Okay? So in this case, we're talking about an sp3 carbon. Right? So that carbon has to be sp3. So sp3 carbon is the only carbon that has the four groups attached to it. Okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> these two carbons in plane, so that's what we call them as in plane. So a normal bond is in plane, okay? A dotted wedge line, that means this is below the plane or backside, either way you like. It's in the back and solid wedge line, it's in the, <clears throat> it's above or front. Okay, so we have four different bonds on sp3 carbons, right? So two in plane, one below and one above, <clears throat> all right? So, what is a stereogenic carbon means then? I guess a stereogenic carbon is a carbon that has all four different groups attached to it. Okay, so carbon can have four bonds now, right? And four bonds should have four groups attached. Okay, so let's say when we have a carbon that has all the four different groups attached to that, okay, that is your stereogenic carbon or chirality center. So anytime you see a stereogenic carbon, we highlight that carbon with an, with an asterisk. Okay, so if you see an asterisk on that carbon, that's the indication that carbon is stereogenic. Okay, again, what is a stereogenic carbon? A carbon that has all four different groups attached to it. So let's say group A, group B, C, and D. So the all four different groups attached to it. Okay, so for example, let's say if you want to take a real example, then you're looking at a carbon, right? So let's say we have a fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine attached to it. All right, so this carbon has four groups, and all the four groups are different, so that carbon is stereogenic. All right, <clears throat> so you can have another example here. All right, so can we call this carbon as stereogenic? Okay, let's find out. So this carbon has four bonds. That means you have four groups attached to it. Okay, but are those groups same or different, right? So bromine 
and a CH3 are two different groups, but hydrogen and this hydrogen are the same. So we cannot call this carbon as stereogenic, okay? Because these two groups are the same. Right. So just to summarize, or just to before we move forward, okay, we can make our own rules here, so we know which carbon is stereogenic and which is not. Okay, so that will make our life a little easier later on. Okay. All right. So rule number one: when you're trying to talk about a stereogenic carbon, then that carbon should have four bonds. Okay. So in, with that, we can we can say a carbon which is sp2 cannot be stereogenic because this has only three groups attached to it, okay? So these cannot be stereogenic, same as triple bond carbon. A triple bond carbon cannot be stereogenic because that has only two groups attached to it, okay? A CH2 carbon cannot be stereogenic, okay? Because the two hydrogens are the same on the on that carbon, and that's also true for a CH3. If you have a CH3 carbon, that cannot be stereogenic because the three hydrogens are the same. So these, cannot be stereogenic. All right. <clears throat> so anytime you see a double bonded carbon, a triple bonded carbon, okay, or sp2 carbon, sp carbon, right, or a CH2 and a CH3, then that cannot be stereogenic, such as this. This carbon is a CH2, okay. And CH2, two hydrogens are the same, and that's why it cannot be stereogenic. And same thing is for CH3. When you have three hydrogens the same, attached to the same carbon, then that cannot be stereogenic. All right. So what we'll do now is we'll try to make it a little bit more complicated. Okay. We'll apply the real examples now. Right. <clears throat> so let's see. We have a structure like this. So now we have more than one carbon in this case. Okay, until now we were only talking about one carbon. Now in this case we have four carbons. There's one carbon right here. There's another carbon right here. There's another carbon here, and there's another carbon. Right. So we have four carbons. Right. So this carbon is a CH3, and we just know we just saw from here the CH3 cannot be stereogenic. So we can ignore that for now. Okay. This is a CH2 carbon, and CH2 cannot be stereogenic as well. And this is CH3. Okay. So we can ignore this, this, and this because they have the hydrogens, okay, the same. Okay, so we are focused on this carbon right here. Okay, so that carbon, okay, <clears throat> that also sp3 and should have four groups, right? So we have a CH3, okay, so that group is a CH3 attached to this side, and this is a CH2 CH3. All right. <clears throat> so and then one side you have an OH. Okay, so what's the missing group here? Okay, when we write skeletal structures, we don't show hydrogens, right? So what's missing here is a hydrogen, okay? And out of four positions, we know that this is above the plane, these two in plane, that means hydrogen is below the plane because that's the only position left. So your hydrogen, which is hidden, should be below the plane, all right? And now, once we found out all the four groups attached to this carbon, now let's compare. So OH and hydrogen are two different groups for sure, right? And then you have a CH3 and a CH2, CH3, okay? So all these groups are different, right? So all the circled groups, there are different groups. That means this carbon here is stereogenic carbon, all right? <clears throat> So let's try another example here. All right. So <clears throat> what are the carbons? We have all these carbons. So we have carbon here, carbon here, and carbon here, right? So all these carbons we can ignore because they're all sp2 carbons, right? And this, this cannot be stereogenic. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We can ignore all these carbons, right? This carbon right here is a CH3 carbon. So we can ignore that as well. So we are only looking at this carbon right here, all right? 
So we have two bonds and a third bond. So the missing bond is a hydrogen that should be below the plane because that's the only position left. Right. So we have a CH3 here, <clears throat> right? So NH2 and a hydrogen, two different groups, right? A CH3 and an aromatic ring, those are two different groups. So all these groups are different, right? So this group is different than this and this and this, right? So what I said before is carbon with all four different groups attached to it, okay? So we're not looking at a bond or an atom in this case. We're looking at the whole group, right? And that's why this carbon is stereogenic. So if you have all right. so let's try this example right. so this carbon right here there's a carbon right here the carbon there's a carbon and then the carbon right so we have total five carbons Right. <clears throat> this cannot be stereogenic because that's a CH3, so we can ignore that. CH2, CH3 cannot be stereogenic, so we can ignore those two. Okay. So we are focused on these two carbons right here. All right. So we'll do one at a time. Right. So if I use this carbon right here, then there should be a hidden hydrogen. All right. So we have a CH3, a hydrogen, OH, and this whole group. So this carbon, sorry, this carbon right here has a OH, a hydrogen, a CH3, and this entire group right here. So all the groups are different. So that carbon is also stereogenic. Right. <clears throat> now let's look at this carbon right here. So the missing group is a hydrogen. Right. So if you're focused on this carbon here, then hydrogen and OH, two different groups, right? Then you have a CH2, CH3, and this group right here. So these two are also two different groups. Okay, so this carbon right here is also stereogenic. So what I'm trying to tell you here that you can have more than one stereogenic carbons in the same molecule. Okay, you can try to find it out how many are there. Okay, and the process is the same always. All right, so until now, whatever examples we saw, they were all the chain molecules, okay? Let's see what's gonna happen when you have a ring structure. Okay. All right, so let's say if you have a cyclohexane ring and there's a bromine right here. All right, <clears throat> so process is still the same. We just had to, a different way to handle it, okay? So how many carbons we have? We have all these carbons right here, okay? So this is a CH2 carbon, CH2, 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 and a CH2. So all these five carbons cannot be stereogenic, okay? So we are looking at this carbon now, okay? So if you look at this carbon, then that has a bromine, and the hidden or the missing group is a hydrogen, okay? So we can put a missing group as a hydrogen. So these two are two different groups for sure, Okay, now when it comes to the ring, okay, you can see how do I go, how do I compare? The, because there are two different groups here. You cannot see the two chains, okay? So the, the best way to handle it is just compare one carbon at one time, okay? So connect, uh, in other words, compare the first point of contact, okay, with this carbon, okay? So we are trying to look at these two groups now, all right? So if you're starting from here, what's the first point of contact is these two carbons, are they same or different? They are same because there's a CH2 and there's a CH2, okay? If that's the same, then you keep going on further, okay? If you go further, then these two are also the same, okay? And they're also attached to the same carbon, okay? So what it means here is no matter how far you go, okay, the molecule ends here, so I cannot go any further, right? But no matter how far you go, you cannot find a tiebreaker, okay? They're all the same. There is no difference. That means this carbon is not stereogenic because this group is same as this group, okay? So the key here is when you have a ring, then you compare one carbon at a time, okay? So first point of contact, then go with second point of contact, go with third point of contact, just keep going on until you find a tri-breaker, 
Okay, if there's no tiebreaker, then those two are the same, like in this case, these groups are the same. So this carbon here, it is not stereogenic. Okay, so let's try a similar example. So if I put a double bond here, right. so I will keep everything else same. Right. <clears throat> Again, let's go with stepwise now. Right. So how many carbons we have? We have six carbons in the ring. Right. So this carbon is CH2, 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 and these two carbons are sp2s. So these carbons cannot be stereogenic. So what we're looking at is this carbon again. All right. <clears throat> so we have bromine and hydrogen. Okay. So two different groups for sure. And then when we when we look at the ring, then we compare carbon with a carbon. Right. So first carbon here and first carbon here here on this side. So is this carbon exact same as this? Okay. No. That means this carbon is stereogenic. So this carbon is sp3 carbon and this is sp2. Okay, when I say same, that means they should be exact same, a CH2 and a CH2. But in this case, this is a CH2 and this is a CH, or this is sp3 and sp2. So these two are two different groups. Okay, so this carbon here is stereogenic. Let's try this example here. All right. <clears throat> so again, we have six carbons here, and we can ignore all these carbons, right? Because those are CH2. So we are focused on these two carbons here. All right. So whenever we are trying to do, don't do two at the same time. Deal with one carbon at one time. When you're done with this, then go for the second one. All right. So let's let's try to do this first, right? So what's missing here is a hydrogen. <clears throat> so the missing group is a hydrogen. Once you put the hydrogen, then we're trying to compare, right? So we have a bromine, we have a hydrogen, two different groups, right? Now when we go in the ring, okay, is this carbon same as this carbon? Because that's your first point of contact here, okay? So this carbon is not same as this because this carbon also has a bromine and this carbon has no bromine on it, okay? When I say same, that means they have to be exact same. So these two carbons are not the same. That means this is a stereogenic carbon. All right, and let's take a look at this one right here. So, <clears throat> right. so bromine is below the plane here. That means the position of your hydrogen should be above the plane, right? So two in plane below and hydrogen should be above the plane. All right. So once you put all the four groups on, around these carbon, right? So we have two groups here and two groups here. Then we start comparing, right? So hydrogen and bromine, two different groups, right? When we go in the ring, let's compare this carbon with, because these are the two bonds coming out of this carbon, right? So is this carbon exact same as this carbon? No, that means this carbon is also a stereogenic carbon, okay? Again, you can have more than one stereogenic carbons in the same molecule, okay? So let's try this example here. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, so how many carbons we have? We have six in the ring. Then there's a carbon here, here, and here. So we have total nine carbons, right? So out of nine carbons, we can ignore these carbons right here. We can ignore the three carbons, and we can ignore the CH3, CH3, and a CH3. So these carbons cannot be stereogenic, right? So we are focused on these three carbons right here. All right, so what we'll do is we will do one at a time, okay? So I'll break it down one at a time, and let's find out. So we have, let's say, So let's look at this carbon right here first. Okay, so this carbon has three bonds, right? Sp3, so the missing is a hydrogen, right? So let's put the hydrogen, and this, this carbon is a CH3 carbon, right? 
<clears throat> so CH3 and a hydrogen, two different groups for sure, right? Now, when we are looking at this, then there are two groups attached to this carbon right here. Okay. So when it's a ring, then you compare one carbon, okay, one time. Okay. So first point of contact here and first point of contact here. So are they same or different? Okay, they are different because this carbon is a CH2 carbon and this is, has a CH3 attached to it. Okay, so since they are not the same, this carbon is stereogenic. <clears throat> All right. Let's try second carbon. All right. So if you are looking at this carbon now. Again, the missing group is a hydrogen. So let's put the hydrogen, and then this is a CH3, right? So CH3 and a hydrogen, two different groups, right? If you're looking at this carbon now, so these are the two other groups attached to it. So are they same or different? So first point of contact is still same. So this attached to a CH3, this attached to a CH3, okay? Go further, so if I go further, this is the second point of contact, okay? So this is second contact, and that's also same, okay? And they're attached to the same carbon. That means these two groups are the same, so this carbon here is not stereogenic, okay? So I cannot put a star on it, okay? Let's go after the third carbon right here. So that's a CH3, a missing group is a hydrogen again. So CH3 and a hydrogen, two different groups. And when you're looking at these two groups right here, like the first point of contact, then this has a CH3, this has no CH3. So these two carbons are not the same. That means that carbon is also stereogenic. All right, so it's all about the comparison. Okay, how can you compare, okay, one group with another group, okay? And when you have a chain, it's easier to see left-hand side and right-hand side. But when you have a ring, you go with one carbon at a time, all right? So we'll do one more example, and then we'll move on with step two, all right? <clears throat> so here. So we have six carbons right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so these carbons cannot be stereogenic because the CH2. So we are focused on the three carbons right here. All right. <clears throat> so if you have, so let's go one off one carbon at one time. Right. So if I look at this carbon, the missing group is a hydrogen. Right. So I put a hydrogen there, right? So OH and hydrogen, two different groups right here. Now when we go in the ring, then you compare one carbon at one time, right? So first point of contact is same, second point of contact is same, and third point of contact is also the same for both, okay? So there's no tiebreaker here. So this carbon is not stereogenic. Let's try this one right here. So I can put a missing hydrogen here, okay? <clears throat> so we have an OH and a hydrogen, two different groups. If you compare these two, then these two first point of contact is same. The second point of contact is also same because you have an OH attached to it and this is an OH attached to it. Okay, there's also hydrogen here. Okay, and they're also attached to the same carbon later. Okay, so no matter how far you go, you did not find a tiebreaker. So this is also <clears throat> this is all not a stereogenic carbon as well. Right. So let's try this one here. So there's a hydrogen, like okay, OH and a hydrogen, two different groups. Okay, when you compare these two are the same, these two are the same, and they're attached to the same carbon again. So, in this molecule, we do not have any stereogenic carbon. 